Hi folks and welcome back to Physics with Captain Rod. Uh, I'm writing this video or I'm making this video here to help demonstrate how to use Kirchhoff's laws to write systems of equations to solve given uh, circuit problems. So we're looking at a circuit here. It's got a couple of DC voltage sources. The voltage on the first one I've got labeled E1, voltage of the second source E2. I got a series of resistors kind of peppered throughout the circuit. Um, I went ahead and made these all the same values. So each resistor has a value R. This will generally not be the case in most circuit problems that you uh, see, but it'll just help smooth and streamline the video. Conceptually it still applies exactly the same. Um, so when dealing with these circuit problems, one of the first things we have to recognize is, you know, how many different currents do we have? And you're going to get a different current in any independent branch of the circuit. So if I take a look at this first branch right here, there is going to be a certain current in that branch. And it's not going to matter if you measure the current here, here, or here. You're going to get the same value. That value um, I'm going to call I1. So I'm going to go ahead and draw the current I1 in this direction. Now I drew in this direction based on the polarity of this battery. When you're doing fairly complex problems, it's quite common to not know for sure which direction the current is. My advice is this, just spend a few seconds looking at it. If you can't tell, just guess a direction and move on. If you guess incorrectly, what will happen is by the time you solve the problem, you'll just end up with a minus sign telling you that the current's in the opposite direction. So I'm going to go ahead and move on look at the different branches. I see another branch right here. I'm going to give that current a name. I'm going to call it I2. Okay. Here's another branch. I'm going to call that current I3, or the current in that branch. Here's another branch right there. I'm going to give that current a name I4. I'm going to assume I guess I'm going to assume this way based on the battery polarity. We're going to have a current over here, again in this, this branch, which is good from here to here. I'm going to give that one a name, I5. I'm not super imaginative about my current names. Now, there's one last branch here. We've got this one right here. And one thing I'd like to note is this. Look at what happens if I kind of define a system kind of like this, keeping in mind that, you know, charge can't be stored in this system in any way, shape, or form. Basically, if this is a steady state problem, whatever's going in has to go out of that system. You'll notice that I've got the current I3 going in. I've got an unknown current that has to be coming out here. I could either call that unknown current I6, but from conservation of charge, it's got to be the same current as I see here going in. So I'm going to go ahead and just label that current I3 in this direction and move on. Now, if you notice things like that, it's perfectly fine. If you don't, we would just give it a name like I6 and move on. It'll work out in the end. All right. So now, um, before we do the next step, I'm also going to take some time to color code the potentials. It helps me with visualization, shows me where all the potential differences are. Um, this, because this is all conducting material, this is all one potential. I'm going to color code that potential red. However, right, when we go across a resistor, there's going to be a change in potential. So I'm going to have a new potential here. I'm going to color code that orange, and that's going to be good to this point. Right? As we go across this resistor, we're going to get another change. I'm going to go ahead and uh, color code that one in yellow. As we go across this resistor, again, there's going to be another change in potential. I'm going to go ahead and uh, call that like light blue. That's going to be good to there. All right. If we move across the battery, there's another change in potential. So I'm going to go ahead and use dark blue for this one. And then as we go across this resistor, uh, there's a change in potential. This is all one potential up to this point. I'm just going to leave that black and use black as my color code here. Now, any time you change in color, that means we're changing potential in the circuit. That's a, that's a nice handy thing to know for uh, writing these circuit problems and for other reasons. All right, so now it's about writing uh, equations. So um, there's two types of equations we can write. E type number one. If we sum up all of the delta V's for any closed loop, they have to add to zero. Second, if we look at any junction, here's an example of a junction right here. 
if we look at the sum of all the currents coming in, that has to equal the sum of all the currents coming out if it's a steady state problem. So these are the two types of equations we're going to write. And I'm going to go ahead and uh, demonstrate what those look like here in just a moment here. Let me get rid of some of this here. Clear. Okay. So here we go, writing Kirchhoff's Law equations. So I always start with loop equations. There's lots of different loops we can write as I go through them. We could do a loop like this. We could do this. We could do a third one like so, right? But there's other loop combinations. This would be a loop we could write. Or we can do something like this. Or we can do the, the outer loop. So we can really write any of those um, loop equations. What I'm going to do, I'm going to start here. I'm going to do this loop right here. I'm going to start here. I'm going to go counter, or I'm sorry, clockwise as I write the equation. Now, when I write these loop equations, I always imagine like a little ladybug uh, walking along the circuit, and I just keep tabs of all the delta v's and all the pluses and minuses. So I imagine my little ladybug starting off on a journey walking along the circuit. Ladybug's walking, 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 walking. At this point the ladybug jumps across here. The ladybug will change in potential by an amount E1. It's an increase in potential. You notice we're going from minus to plus. The red is at a higher potential than the, uh, the black. Right? My ladybug keeps walking, keeps walking, keeps walking. At this point, the ladybug is going to change in potential across this resistor by an amount I1R. So we're going to have minus I1R. The minus sign is because if, if I follow this current around, right here at this resistor, that current is in this direction. Current always goes from higher to lower potential. So if I move left to right, that's an increase in, I'm sorry, a decrease in potential. All right, my ladybug is on the orange potential now, walks, walks, walks to this point. When the ladybug jumps across this resistor, the ladybug's going from yellow to black. Right? Yellow is a higher potential than black based on this current direction. So we're going to have minus I2R. Ladybug is now at the black potential, moves over to here. It's back where it started, so this sum equals zero. There's my first equation. All right, next equation. I'm going to go ahead and start right here and do this loop. So I imagine my little ladybug starting here. As the ladybug moves across this resistor, we're going from black to orange. That's going to be an increase in potential oops, by an amount I to R. Increase based on the fact that yellow is the high, or orange is higher potential than black based on that current direction. Ladybug keeps walking, walking, walking. As the ladybug jumps from orange to yellow, that ladybug will drop in potential by an amount I3R for right here. Ladybug keeps walking, walking, walking. Ladybug jumps from yellow to blue. That's going to be an increase in potential by an amount I4R. And again, that's an increase because I've got current 4R uh, going up. So yellow is a higher potential than blue. Ladybug then has to jump across the battery from light blue to dark blue. That is going to be a drop in potential by an amount E2. Ladybug walks along this path, hits this resistor as it jumps across it. Going from blue to black, there's another potential drop by an amount I3R. Ladybug is back where Ladybug started, so equals zero. Next loop. I'm going to go ahead, starting right here, do this loop over on the right. Starting lower left corner, ladybug's walking, 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 goes from dark blue to light blue. That's an increase in potential by an amount E2. Ladybug jumps across the resistor. That's going to be a drop in potential by an amount I4R. We're at the yellow potential now. Ladybug walks here, jumps across this resistor from yellow to blue. That is a drop by an amount I5R. Ladybug is back where she started, or at the blue potential, so add up all the delta Vs, they add to zero. Now, one thing I'd like to point out, take a look at the branches that I've done. And when you're doing these in your homework, I suggest you actually color the branches or code it in some way, shape, or form. So there was the first branch. Then we did this branch. Then we did this branch. 
you'll notice that the entire circuit is now colored in green. That has a very important mathematical consequence. Any, any loop I choose to use, like for example if I do this loop, it's already colored in green. And what that means is, you're, is this. Mathematically, the equation you get from that loop is not what's called an independent equation. What it's going to be is a linear combination of some of these we've already written. Long story short, you don't get an independent equation that will allow you to solve for more unknowns. Once you've used the entire circuit, you can't do any more loop equations. So now we have to move and start doing junction equations. So I already got a little circle here. I'm going to take a look at this junction right here. What comes into that junction has to go out. So as I glance at it, I see the current I3 going in, I2 going in, I1 going out. That allows me to write this equation. I2 plus I3 has to equal I1. I'm going to go ahead and look uh, maybe right here. Uh, actually, let's look here. Because that orange junction, I'm going to have uh, equations with I2, I3, and I1 again. I think I'm going to end up with the same junction, the same equation right here. I'm going to take a look at this junction. This is a different junction. I know I've got a different current coming in I5. The current coming in is I5, going out is I3 and I4. So the last equation I can write, oops, let me do that in black, is I5 is equal to I3 plus I4 from that junction right there. Could have also done this junction, that would be just fine. So you notice we now have five equations, one equation one, two, three, four, five. This is a system of equations that can be solved for up to five unknowns. Any currents that come out positive mean they're in the correct directions. Any currents that come out negative mean, whoops, uh, they're in the reverse direction or opposite the direction shown, but that's that's not a problem to be, to, be uh, to worry about. And if that occurs, don't go back and change your picture. It's important that your picture be consistent with your equations. If you change a current direction after the fact, they the you have you have to either a go back and change all the equations, the appropriate plus and minus signs changes, uh, or b you leave it. And if you leave it, however, your picture is no longer consistent with your uh, equations. So that's that's bad. We don't want that. So my advice when you get a negative value for current, just don't worry about it. Just put uh, opposite direction shown. Leave your equations good. They're still consistent with your picture, and it's easy to grade. So um, hope this video helped demonstrate these concepts. Have a great day.